Welcome back to the workshop. Today I'm doing a request video and we're doing a guitar video. What I've got here is a strap copy that I never got around to finishing, but I've been using it as my dummy and something to just kind of play around with. If you remember from my first video, this is the one I inlaid Tim Sway's Not So Sticker onto. Today I had somebody ask me about taking off sharp fret ends. Now obviously I'm going to be skipping a step because in order to do a the fret ends you need to first level all the frets and make sure that your neck is straight. I'm going to get right into nipping off the fret ends. Now these ones aren't too bad but like I said this is a dummy guitar basically so I'm going to use this to show you how to do it. Now what you'll need is obviously you need your fret straight edge. You'll need a fret rocker to make sure that these frets are straight. You'll need various files, some sandpaper. Right here I've got 320 because you'll need it at the end to help polish out the frets. I have a specialty tool that I made here that does the angle on the frets. This one is 35 degrees. And then something to protect your fretboard. You either have a fret slot or masking tape. Masking tape is usually the go-to for most people. Without further ado, let's get into it. Now when you start doing this, you'll need something to rest your guitar on. In this case, I have my neck rest and a pad here. You could get by just as easily with something soft to put it on. I've seen people use towels and various other things and then something for the neck to rest on. So something soft like a pillow or a towel with something underneath it to help rest the fret on. In this application, I will work mostly on the neck rest, but as you can see, it kind of covers up the frets in this area here. So when I get to the edges, I will do various different me methods to do that. So you want to start off by making sure that your neck is straight. And I went ahead and made sure that was straight before starting this video. You could also do that by making sure that all of your frets are level. If the frets are not level, you first need to go through level the frets before you do this. In a lot of guitars that you will order, uh, especially if they're cheaper models and models from overseas, they will definitely have the sharp fret ends because there are certain things that they overlook in production because most of the time it is a production line and you are not getting a quote unquote tech actually doing the fret work. So they will do enough to make sure that it's straight and that it is up to their manufacturing spec. But I would recommend having a tech look at those instruments before you start playing. If you feel comfortable, you can go ahead and try this method here. When I knock out these frets on the ends here when they're sharp, I will do it with the fretboard unmasked. It helps profile it to the side of the neck and helps put a little bit of an angle on the edge of your fretboard, which makes it a little more comfortable to play. Now, like I said, these frets aren't too bad because they've already previously been done before and this neck has already been worked on several times. I ended up adding scalloping into this one. So this one has had quite a bit of work into this. So when I start, there's two methods that you could do with this. You could go ahead and make this block. I made this out of some thick wood with an acrylite inlay or laid on top of it. And then I cut a 35 degree angle and I glued in piece of a file. Now you don't want to overflow it with glue just enough to hold the file in because you want it to be able to cut all the way up to the surface. And this acrylate surface is smooth so it helps ride against the frets. The wood tends to wear away quicker so I like to put something on the bottom for it to slide across. The other method if you have a careful hand is using a file. Now when I'm doing 
I can get a good angle here. When I'm doing the edge of the fretboard, we want to make sure that we knock off any excess bit. So I'll do it at kind of a shallow angle first and just kind of run right across there to make sure that these files or these frets aren't catching too much. Once I've gone and knocked off those pieces, then I'll move to my angle. So that way you're taking off what is hanging over the fretboard. Now you got to remember when you're working with the frets, just like working with any metal, you are going to be creating a burr on the ends of it. So I like to work in one direction, one single stroke, rather than going back and forth on here because then you are causing a burr to expand on either side and it just results in more cleanup in the end. So once I've got those all knocked down to the edge of where my neck is, now remember your fretboard is going to be oiled, so knocking off this corner isn't going to be too big of a deal once you reorder, re-oil the fretboard. So again, working in one single direction, start at where the nut is, press it against the frets, and you just want to run in one single direction. You don't want to press down into it, you just want it to ride across the frets so that you get a consistent angle in those frets. Like I said, I like to do this without the tape on so it knocks off that corner on the fretboard too, which helps make it smooth while you're playing and running across the fretboard. And then that makes your nice consistent 35 degree break on all of these frets. Once you've gone and cleaned it up to a satisfactory place, you're going to notice that there's some sharp parts on the outer edges of your frets. You're going to want to clean that up with a file. I like to use these triangle files because it gives me something to rest on, but I alter my files and I actually knock off this corner and make it smooth so that you're not marking into your fretboard. So it can ride across the fretboard without damaging it too much. You still want to do, put some protection on there. There's two ways you can do that. It's either with masking tape or with this fret slot. Fret slot is simple. It just fits over top of your frets and you can use that to cover up the actual wood part of your fret. And then you can use that to ride across so you're not directly on there. Now, obviously there are some gaps on either end, which is why I like to knock off that corner so that any chance that you are touching the fretboard is reduces any marks on there. So I don't like to have this edge right up against it because that makes it harder to get to that end. I like to just pull it over and I work one side of the fret first, going in a circular motion just to knock off the burrs on there. Now I'll start at one end of the fretboard and work my way all the way down on that one side, reverse it and do this side, so working in the same direction, and then I will flip the guitar the other direction and then I will do the other side. I'm right handed so going in this direction is much more comfortable. So once I've got those all set then I will just flip my whole workstation and reverse my motion to work in the opposite direction. Once you have knocked those off, and I'm just going to go ahead and tape off my fretboard here. Now, I'm only going to focus on these upper frets because, like I said, this fretboard has a partial scallop, so what I like to call a half moon scallop. So it starts at about this fret and comes over. But these frets are straight, so that'll show you the basic method that I use to go across the fret. So I'm going to start here and work my way over here. It's really just a simple motion. You want to hold a consistent angle 
and then you just run along to clean up that edge. And then once you've done that edge, you just kind of work your way over. Once you get good at it, you can build up speed and just kind of work your way over to knock off those ends. Now you notice I am constantly kind of feeling the edges to make sure that I've knocked off all the burr on that. And once I've completed that to a spot that's satisfactory to me, I will then switch my way over to the other side. Now you see I'm working in the opposite direction. I like to work my way out. That way all my frets are exactly the same when I'm done. Now, like I said, <clears throat> you flip it around. start at the end and work my way down. And it's as quick as simple as that. Now to finish that off, you're just going to take your 320 here and basically you're just going to knock the burrs off just like you would with any any good knife. Now remember your your frets are metal, so it's going to have that burr. So even though you've done a nice job of rounding these off, those burrs can still cause it to feel like it's sharp. So I just kind of roll it around my finger and I just work my way around with a light touch so that I'm not sanding too much away on all of it, making sure that I'm focusing on the ends of these frets. And then all that's left is removing all this tape. Now those feel pretty nice. And you'll notice that there isn't really any marks on the fretboard. Like I said, you want to knock off that edge to make it smooth to ride against the fret so it's not marking your fretboard. Now that's all that's left before cleaning it off is cleaning your fretboard and then oiling it and stringing this bad boy up and you are ready to rock. I hope this video was a help to you. If you like videos like this, please let me know down in the comments. I'd be happy to do more. And let me know what you'd like to see. Or let me know what you'd like me to do with this Strat. I am looking for crazy ideas to alter this guitar. I have been struggling to come up with ideas of what I'd like to do to it, so I'd love to hear what you would like to see. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week. Bye.